Hey, deserving listeners, this is chapter six in my deep dive on apologies. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. In this lecture, I'm going to go into detail on the four phases of forgiveness. Forgiveness often, especially when it's a major transgression, is not something that you just do spontaneously. It's something that you have to do a lot of prep work for. There's a lot of emotional work you have to do. There's a lot of after work. And so forgiveness is a pretty complicated process. And sometimes we have to intentionally go down that road. We can't just naturally fall into forgiveness. So that's what today's lecture is going to be. As an introduction, I'm going to analyze an, another apology, another public apology, this time with Chris Brown apologizing to Rihanna, who he was in a relationship with, and I think allegedly, or maybe he even admits to being violent with her, I think pretty extensively. This was about 15 years ago, so let's watch. Hi, I'm Chris Brown. Since February, my attorney has advised me not to speak out, even though ever since the incident I wanted to publicly express my deepest regret and accept full responsibility. Although I would do some interviews and answer some questions in the future, I felt it was time that you heard directly from me that I am sorry. Okay. It seems sincere to me. It could be an act. You could be the judge. Maybe we'll hear more. But okay, so he comes out of the gate saying that in February there was an allegation or an incident and that his attorney has said not to talk about it. He says that in spite of that, I just want to come out and say I take full responsibility and that I am sorry. I will say, I don't know anything about Chris Brown. I know some of y'all might consider that to be strange. I'm an old person. It's just not really my... I'm coming in, into this extremely naive and ignorant of the entire thing. But anyway, he, he seems sincere th so far, but let's watch. I have tried to live my life in a way which can make those around me proud of me. And until recently, I think I was doing a pretty good job. I wish I had the chance to live those few moments again. Okay, so if he's apologizing, it's hard to know who he's apologizing to exactly, right? He obviously should be apologizing to Rihanna, but if he's apologizing to the public, I guess I'm a part of that 15 years later. <laughs> and he's apologizing, I, I guess to me in a sense. He's essentially saying that he's not proud of what he did. He's really ashamed. He's not saying that directly. If you are apologizing, and usually we're apologizing to our loved ones, you should be explicit with that. You should say, I feel remorse, and you should really try to elaborate. Apologies are about elaboration, usually. The word remorse, or the word apology, or the word I regret, these things are topic sentences, they're introductions, and then you want to provide your elaboration. And in order to elaborate, you also have to be connected with your emotions. You have to be able to talk about those sorts of things. And some people weren't raised in families where they were allowed to do that or their gender. They were socialized due to their gender in a way that made it hard for them to do that. Anyway, so essentially he's saying that he looks at the incident and says that it was not something that he's proud of. It's something that he has remorse or regret around. And he w makes the point that he has been pretty good up until that point at being a good person. But I would be surprised if everything was fine. He had no aggression. He had no tendency in that in that arena in terms of intimate partner violence, which of course can include verbal and emotional abuse. I'd be surprised if he never did anything al along those lines with Rihanna, with previous partners, and then all of a sudden, boom, he is that violent with Rihanna. It can happen sometimes, but it's rare. But that that's just the first little thought I have. And if you're apologizing, one thing to think about is you don't want to come across like you're trying to say things that are self-serving in the beginning because it can really taint your entire apology. But unfortunately, I can't. I cannot go into what happened. And most importantly, I'm not going to sit here and make any excuses. I take great pride in me being able to exercise self-control and what I did was inexcusable. Okay. I mean, it, he's saying things that come across like he is he's sorry and that he's taking responsibility and that it, there's no excuse for what he did. This is going pretty well so far. I am very sad and very ashamed of what I've done. My mother and my spiritual teachings have taught me way better than that. I have told Rihanna countless times and I'm telling you today that I'm truly, truly sorry and that I wasn't able to handle the situation both differently and better. He's coming at it from a lot of different angles. He's saying with a lot of different angles, basically the same thing is, I did something, it was wrong, I feel terrible, I did something, it was wrong, I harmed someone, it was terrible. So that lends itself to credibility. And I'm also glad that he's saying that he has apologized to Rihanna many times, right? Because of course, that's the main person that he should be apologizing to, and that would be a pretty elaborate process. 
I don't think they're still together, but if they were, in my experience when I'm working with couples, an incident like that might require apologies for the rest of your life. It's that big of a deal, it's that big of a transgression. The emotional pain and wounds are likely to last a lifetime for Rihanna. And thus, if she were in a relationship with him, those feelings would come up and interfere with the relationship. And then he would again have to apologize and take responsibility and show remorse. So now I will say that it would help if he were to elaborate more on the remorse and the sadness and the sorrow, because if he said something like, I haven't been able to think about anything else, or I can't sleep at night because that's all I've been thinking about, or I don't know if I've ever been this depressed about who I am and I can't stop thinking about it, something like that. Only if it's true, right? But if those things are true for you as you're apologizing, saying those things can can really drive home to the transgressed individual that it really is impacting you. You're taking this very seriously. It's not something that just happened and then now you're just apologizing as a matter of course. It, it, this is something that you're living with, the remorse. I recognize that I've truly been blessed. I've been blessed with a wonderful family, wonderful friends and fans. God has been generous in giving me the ability which has brought me fame and fortune. I've done a lot of soul searching and over the past several months I've talked with my minister and my mother and I spent a lot of time trying to understand what happened and why. Good. So that's a huge component of apology. And this is the first public apology that I've seen with this component. We saw Bill Clinton, we saw Donald Trump, we saw Taylor Swift. That wasn't really a formal apology, so we can't really ding Taylor Swift for that. But this is the first time we're hearing that component being met to some extent, that he's saying, I have been looking into and talking to other people about how did I do that? And you'll hear me talk often. I get chills thinking about the fact that he just did that. I'm not saying he's a good person. I don't know. I don't know anything. But I will say that when I am seeing apologies on TV, on reality TV, in the world, and in my personal life, on my couch, in my office, as a therapist, this is something that is often neglected because people will feel ashamed of themselves and will not want to face what happened. Plus, they might not have a way of investigating themselves, and so they'll just avoid the whole topic. They'll be like, well, I'm just not never going to do it again. Don't, don't worry about it. I'm sorry, okay? That's not not sufficient because especially if you've done something like this, it will happen again in all likelihood unless you address the factors and the causes and your personality and your traumas in all likelihood that led to that behavior developing within you. It's still his fault. He, he made a choice, but there are factors that led up to that. And the first step of really changing the future so that you don't do this again is to try to figure out how you did it in the first place. And a big part of that is to talk with other people because when you're alone and you're in head, sometimes it's hard to figure that out. Plus, he's pretty young at this point, and having some guidance from more wise individuals to help him is, is good. So he's saying he's doing that, and maybe he'll even go into why in, in maybe this video or maybe a future video. Because what this communicates to the harmed individual is that, one, you're taking this very seriously. It's not just something that you're not taking seriously. You're just like, well, I'm never going to do it. You're like, I'm so remorseful for what I did that I've been spending a lot of time really soul searching and, and asking other people and reading research and going to therapy and figuring out like what happened that made that happen? You know, what is it about me? Because if you're Rihanna in all likelihood, you see Chris Brown not as someone that just had an accident, but has a problem. There's something wrong with him or something different about him that resulted in him doing what he did. So that would be reassuring. Also, it gives Chris Brown a chance to learn from his mistakes, it gives him a chance to actually change whether Rihanna stays with him or not. He deserves to actually investigate that so that he doesn't ruin the rest of his relationships and at the very least he doesn't abuse and harm and, and hurt other people. And I've let a lot of people down and I realize that and no one is more disappointed in me than I am. As many of you know, I grew up in a home where there was domestic violence and I saw firsthand what uncontrolled rage could do. I have sought and I'm continuing to seek help to ensure that what occurred in February can never happen again. 
Okay, so we're hearing a factor that he grew up with a lot of domestic violence in his home, he's saying that, and that absolutely can be a factor. It's modeled to you, you also have a lot of traumas around feeling powerless, and also a lot of attachment injuries that can occur because of that that can be triggered in a relationship. So who knows, but that's a good topic sentence to a, a long, long discussion and an exploration for him. And as I sit here today, I can tell you that I would do everything in my power to make sure that it never happens again, and I promise that. What I did was unacceptable, 100%. I can only ask and pray that you forgive me, please. Okay, I mean, uh, it's, it seems mostly sincere. I mean, you might know more about this and thus conclude one way or the other, but if, given that I've only seen this and this is the only thing I've ever seen from him before, and I've heard his music, but I, I, I've never heard him in an interview, I don't think. This seems sincere. Now, as a member of the public, he doesn't really have to apologize to me that much, right? It's mainly Rihanna and his family, but to me, I, hearing this, I'd be like, okay, but honestly, given my experience with humans in my personal life, unless he is willing to engage in therapy for the next 20 years, because that's what it takes often to really heal and change such that you are no longer abusive in any sort of way, whether he might be able to attenuate his violent abusive behavior, but there's always a tendency for rage and entitlement and intimidation that can happen from abusive individuals. And I don't know if that's the case for him, but I wouldn't be surprised. So unless I heard that he was willing to engage in long-term therapy, not only individual therapy, but possibly couple therapy, of course, trauma-oriented therapy. I don't know if drug and alcohol was involved as well, which would require its own specialized treatment. I hope that others learn from my mistake. I intend to live my life so that I'm truly worthy of the term role model. Thank you. Okay, a good start. As a member of the public, he's apologizing to me, and I would say, okay, Wow, good start as far as public apologies goes. That was good. Full responsibility, no blame. There were only a couple moments there where he was starting to lose me, not entirely, but where he was talking about how great he is and how he's never done anything like that before. And I'm like, well, that doesn't seem like... And that actually kind of flies in the face of him investigating himself a lot, right? Because if he truly has investigated himself, in all likelihood, he's like, you know, I've done other things that I was in denial about that were a ramp up to that behavior that I committed in the incident. I don't know that to be true, but you know, it could be. Let me wrap it up there and then tune in next time when I continue watching more of his interviews regarding this, because I think there are more apologies. And so let's get to the deep dive on the four phases of forgiveness. If you want to hear that, you have to become a patron of the podcast by going to patreon.com. When you become a patron, you get access to this lecture and all the rest of the deep dive chapters. There will be, I don't know, 15 or something, a lot. Uh, there's a lot to get into. Uh, I was talking with my wife about how long it was taking me to record this deep dive, and she's like, you really have that much to say about apologies? And I'm like, yeah, I, I didn't think so in the beginning, but there's so much research, there's so much, there's so much to consider. It involves really everything. I mean, everything ties to it, attachment, relationships, public relations, corporations apologizing to each other, forgiveness, religion, Christianity. I mean, there's just so many things that the history of forgiveness, the history of apologies and how important they are in our lives. I always just ask everyone to think it, to really typify it. I ask people to think about, think about your parents, think about your partner, think about your past partners, think about your closest friends and think about the apologies you would love to receive the apologies that you would love to get from these people. Sometimes it's a parent, an estranged parent. Sometimes it's a, a former friend that rejected you or a former partner that hurt your feelings or even your current partner. There are things that, imagine just getting a full-fledged, deeply felt, empathetic, understanding apology to you where someone just really lays it on thick and really shows you that they understand and they take the time to understand and they're dedicated to you and to change. And just imagine that, right? And just imagine who in our lives want to get some of those from us and all the barriers that get in the way of that and how much better the world would be if we did those kinds of things mutually, not only personally, but between nations and governments and political parties. I just think it would change the world. So anyway, if you want to become a patron, do so. If not, totally cool. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.